Hello folks. Today we're going to talk about changes or shifts in supply, those factors or those non-price determinants that can cause market supply to change. Now again, recognize like demand that that is different than me saying a change in quantity demanded. These are factors that can actually cause market supply to change, the entire supply in the market to either decrease or to increase. First, a very brief review. We're going to construct a supply curve based on the numbers given here on our supply schedule. In this case, it looks like we're going to be graphing the supply of chocolate bars, so it's the chocolate bar market and the ability and willingness of producers to supply chocolate bars to the market. And we note that as the price of chocolate bars goes up, producers are more willing and able to make more chocolate bars available. So very quickly we're going to construct this market this is the chocolate bar market. I'm taking care here to properly label price and quantity, the market. I've plotted my points. I have uh, found the line of best fit for my upwardly sloping supply curve and I have labeled it S for supply. So all of this at this point should be review. We've done this now for at least a week, perhaps more. So this, this should be an easy thing for you to, to construct a supply curve. So I'm going to make my supply schedule go away now and in its place. I've listed one, two, three, four, five real world events in the market that can cause supply to change. The first is changes in productive technology. Uh, the technology that firms implement in order to supply. If we have an improvement in that technology, then they will be able to increase their production uh, at, at every single price level in the market. Changes in, in factor costs, the costs that firms have to pay for land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, if those change, then the supply uh, of, of, uh, of uh, in the market will, will either increase uh, if these things become cheaper or it will decrease if these factors become more expensive. If I have a change in the number of sellers in the market, clearly if I have more firms supplying, I'm going to increase supply, and if I have less firms or fewer firms supplying, then I can decrease the supply. If uh, firms expect changes in, in factor costs, uh, that will then uh, cause them to either back off on their, their production or increase their production, or if they're expecting the price of whatever it is that they're producing to change in the market, that likewise could, could impact their supply. And then finally, uh, changes in the prices of producer substitutes. If I have a firm that can produce two, two closely related goods, like let's say sedans or 4 by 4s and can shift that production very, very quickly, uh, then let's say in in my my firm that can produce sedans or four by fours, if the price of four by fours goes up in the market, then we would expect the firm to cut back on the production of sedans and produce more four by fours. Why? It's because they're they're going to be making more money based on the sales of those four by fours. So if we have changes in those kinds of related goods, then uh, we'll affect supply. We'll expect supply to change. So. Uh, Again, without further ado, you're going to be looking at a number of these these uh, these variables and have a lot of practice in, in changing them. All we're wanting to do now is to see what does a change in supply look like when supply increases. That is simply a right shift in the supply curve. That's an increase in supply from S to S1. At every single price level, I have increased the amount that uh, producers are, are supplying in the market. What does a decrease in supply look like? Well, that is a left shift in supply from S to S2. At every single price level, I have decreased the amount of, of uh, supply that, that firms are willing to, to give to the market. So this is a very, very uh, simple procedure. Uh, hope that makes sense, and we'll see you soon.